Hey, my friends, with the Super Bowl just happening and with the Olympics going on, I thought this could be a fun time to take a look at some of the iconic photos over the past hundred years or so and see why they're iconic and if they're even great images. I do want to apologize for some of the quality of these images. I tried to find the original or the best copy I could find, which was not very easy. So please just bear with me on some of these because we're not going to look at the actual quality of the image. This first image is taken by John Gaps III, taken for Associated Press, also known as AP. This is Super Bowl XXXIV. St. Louis Rams take on the Tennessee Titans in January 3rd of the year 2000. This image, I don't think it's a great image. Personally, there's no faces. He is inches from the goal line, but if the photographer could have been closer to the goal line, that would have been nice. So you could have seen a good comparison of where the ball is in reference to the goal line. Also, this is the end of the place, the end of the action. So it's not really that spectacular. Okay, it's been determined it's not a great image, but why would it be considered iconic? And actually, in some circles, it's called the tackle. Well, it's because Mike Jones is tackling Kevin Dyson, which preserves the Rams' 23-16 win over the Titans. So it's iconic because it's a stop, which would have changed the whole outcome of the game, and it's at the Super Bowl. That's why it's considered iconic. The second image I selected is the Eastern Conference Finals in 1965. The Celtics were leading 110-109, John Havlicek steals the ball on the inbounds pass from the Philadelphia 76ers. This secures the Celtics' victory, and they do go on to win the NBA Finals, defeating the Lakers in five games. Okay, so let's see. Does this image have the things that we're looking for? Does it have action? Yes, it does have some action. Does it have faces? Yes and no. Does it have John Havlicek's face, which would have been nice to be on this? Does it have some friction? Yes, we have some friction going on. We got a foot cut off, but that's okay. Not that big of a deal. But the image, if you didn't know this was an Eastern Conference championship, it wouldn't be that great of an image. It's one I would delete. I'm pretty sure all of you know who this athlete is. That's right. It's number 23, Michael Phelps. Okay, I know. I know. I'm just kidding. It's Michael Jordan. We all know that. 1988 slam dunk competition. He beats Dominique Wilkins. Is it a great image? It's pretty cool. I like it. It's got him flying in the air. He's got some action that way. You got a face, got the ball. I still don't like it though. The only reason it's iconic is because of when it happened and what was going on All-Star Weekend. And he scored a perfect 50 points. There's a bright light in the left-hand corner, which annoys me because I keep looking at that. He's wearing red. The color of the scoreboard is red. So I'm kind of losing him up there. And then I just see the Gatorade sign up there. It's not a great image in my eyes. It's one I would get rid of. Now I'm going to take you way, way back to the 1936 Olympics held in Berlin, Germany. Keep in mind, Berlin, Germany in 1936. Hitler was around. That's right. Hitler was around. And this is none other than Jesse Owens picking up his gold medal. One of four he won overall in the Olympics. This one he won for the long jump. Is this a great image? No. And by the way, this was taken by Hitler's personal photographer. It's not a great image. Is someone getting an award. The reason this is iconic is because this was during Hitler's times and a black athlete was winning four gold medals and that's why it's iconic. Okay, so now we have a football athlete smoking. Now he's not smoking before a game or after a game. This is at halftime. This was halftime of this first Super Bowl with the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Green Bay Packers, 1967. He's smoking at halftime. Len Dawson, Len Dawson is smoking at halftime. This isn't your typical sports photo. doesn't have any action to it. You got a face, which we always like, but it's nothing you would write home to mama about. But it's iconic because this was during the Super Bowl. Halftime of the Super Bowl, Len Dawson is smoking. Does that happen anymore? All right, I'm going to take you to soccer now. What you're seeing is Brandy Chastain celebrating after kicking the winning penalty kick against China. This was the 1999 FIFA Women's World Cup. She has a reason to celebrate. That is for dang sure because 120 minutes against China, nobody scored, went into the penalty kicking situation, and she comes away kicking that final kick. You have celebrations, you have emotions, you have hands in the air, you got, you got her teammates running to go tackle her and congratulate her. It, it's a really good image. I like this image a lot because it captures a lot. Even if you don't know what's going on for sure, you know that something spectacular just happened. So let's move off the field slightly and get into some track and field. You're looking at Mary Decker. This was the 1984 Olympics held in Los Angeles. Mary Decker was the odds-on favorite to win the 3,000 meter. 
Unfortunately, halfway through the race, some feet got tangled up. Mary Decker hits hard. She's out of the race. And I love this image because it shows the anguish and the pain in her face to be lying there on the infield knowing you're done. The 3000 meter, you're out of it. You're not going to win it. And having those emotions hit you, you can just see it on her face. It tells the whole story. If you get a chance, you should read the story about the photographer who took this image, how he was able to get it, and what he was dealing with at the time. It's an interesting read, and if you're a sports photographer or want to be a sports photographer, you should check it out. And now, my favorite photo of the entire set that I've showed you so far, and for those of you who don't know, this is Muhammad Ali standing over Sonny Liston. This is back in 1965. Muhammad knocked Sonny out in the first round, and he's still standing over him when this photo was taken. This is a great image. It's got the emotion there, the action. Yes, it's right at the end of the action. But looking at this image, you know what happened. You know, one guy knocked the other guy out. And you can tell this was an important event. Lots of photojournalists, lots of people in attendance. You just look, they're like everywhere. I'm a big proponent of images that can tell the story by themselves. And this image does that. There's so much going on here that I know exactly what happened. And I know it was something important. This image just really calls out to me. And I, I, I love looking at it. Now, if I wanted to be nitpicky, the only thing I wish this image had was a blown out background. Just a little bit. Just a little more to kind of separate the crowd from the action that happened. But, you know, that's just being nitpicky. Here's something fun for you guys, though. Take a look at the cameras. Let me zoom in here. Take a look at the cameras that they were using back in 1965. It will make you laugh. And we complain about the cameras we have these days. Even brand new cameras that come out by Nikon, Canon, and Sony... Everybody's always complaining that they're just not good enough. They don't do enough. Why couldn't they give us this? But look what they were shooting with back in 1965. The one thing I learned about doing research on iconic photos is you never know what's going to be considered an iconic photo until after the fact. Until history decides, yes, this was an iconic photo because of the history it captured. Thanks for joining me, my friends. And if nothing else, I hope these images have inspired you to grab your camera and get out and shoot.